Ah, the Christmas special. Such a staple of the season. Nothing like a festive plot with your favorite characters to get you in the spirit of the holidays. Even if 90% of these are just Santa's in trouble and these characters had to help him. But what if one of your favorite shows had the most incomprehensible, random, incoherent mess of a story that becomes one of the most infamously bad episodes it's ever produced? That is the fate that befell Ben 10 fans with its first and only Christmas special. Yeah, I talked about it a bit in my top 5 best and worst episodes of Ben 10 Classic video, which you should see, but I was brief about it since this really needs to get in depth. Like, you need to truly feel how incomprehensible this episode is. So let's get right into the festive madness that is Merry Christmas. Now, I want to remind you all that Ben 10 takes place entirely during summer vacation, which is pretty much the exact opposite of Christmas. And yeah, this feels more of a network mandate, so it's hard to really frame it unless you summer ween the hell out of it. But they did have something interesting at least. So it starts out with the Tennysons driving through Death Valley to their next destination. Though yeah, summer heat in the desert pretty much made harder than hell in there. Ben gets the bright idea to upgrade the AC by turning into... Grey Matter. You know, not upgrade. The alien who literally does that. I mean, I guess it would be for like 10 minutes, but it's kind of up in the air if Upgrade can fix machinery after he leaves. But at least Grey Matter can make it better. But I guess Hyper Intelligence has a limit with crummy AC units as it breaks down and covers the rust book and smog as they're forced to stop by the road. But coincidence of coincidence, they stop by a weird random gateway by the road that's just... there. They check it out as Grandpa theorizes it must have been from a roadside Christmas attraction that was forgotten. Yeah, Death Valley is prime real estate for that. Though a cool breeze comes inside as they're curious enough to open the door, revealing a winter wonderland inside. Before they can react much, we see a mysterious figure watching, happy that Max has arrived. Then we jam to the freaking awesome theme song. But afterwards, the cousin play in the snow, enjoying the cold, as Max wonders how they're able to have snow making machines, which they really should question more before the three bond in a snowball fight. It's actually pretty wholesome to see, I love it! They go to the village, impressed by whatever special effects must cause this, as they see real elves running around which they don't seem to question until they see just how far this village goes for the holiday. Honestly, it kind of puts you in the festive mood. It makes Max think that they never really had a Christmas altogether since Ben and Gwen live separately, which is kind of a sad idea that the three really think about for a bit. Actually, let me get to a genuine positive for this episode. The family dynamic is really good, especially compared to the rest of Classic. One of the biggest problems of the series is that Ben and Gwen are constantly at each other's throats, and occasionally it can get really annoying to watch. But here they actually commit to the family message, and don't fight at all when the story really could've. It's really nice to see. But they split up to enjoy the park, but while Max is alone, he's eyed again by the mysterious figure, who actually gives genuinely creepy vibes here saying that while he's different, he'll be perfect for the role. The elves come and escort him to the figure. Okay, again, how does no one question this? Like, even if you think these are costumes, no one questions why a bunch of kids are working in this Christmas place? Do you think it's like the Santa Claus movies or something? One elf is sad, meaning he's an important character for later. But Max is taken to a special room where he meets the head elf, Mr. Jingles, who's notably older than the others. He welcomes in the holiday village and says they've been waiting for him. It's revealed that Mr. Jingles thinks Max is Santa, which of course he thinks is ridiculous. But Mr. Jingles refuses to let him leave, as he makes his elves do some magic thingy that dresses up Max like Santa and then imprisons him. Which, I'm pretty sure kidnapping Santa is something you don't do if you want a Merry Christmas, but this guy is clearly insane anyway. He says this to make sure he fulfills his responsibilities. Max tries to get out and say he's not Santa, but Jingle just shows him off to the other worker elves in this cavernous workshop as they cheer, finally seeing Santa. Though Mr. Jingles thanks them for bringing Ben and Gwen, as he can always use more elves. Which, oof, okay now, we're getting to some conflict and the creepiness of the episode is starting to set in. Not a bad start. Though, yeah, a lot of questions are being brought up, but yeah, prepare to be disappointed. So, Ben and Gwen are just... Doing stuff? As an army of giant Nutcracker soldiers march on as they're nervous. That sad elf whose lair named Elsgood tries to distract them and tells them it's Jingle's guards and they need to run. You must get out! Go. 
What -o? Wait, they haven't ever skedaddled before? It's not that old fashioned. So Ben uses the Onishers to fight back as Heat Blast but becomes Accelerate, which make a big escape onto the ice rink. But as a neat addition, Accelerate has a lot of trouble running on ice, which is a nice way of extra conflict. So Accelerate in a kind of neat scene tries to weave around the Nutcrackers on ice before escaping through the snowbank. Then, as Gwen fights some by hand since he hasn't learned magic yet, Ben somehow makes a ton of snowballs with Accelerate's claw hands to fight back. I was thinking more like a snowball slaughter fest. Man, Classic Ben was really into slaughtering his enemies back then. And yeah, using his hyper speed tornado move decimates the Nutcrackers. All good warns the need to leave now or else fall into the curse of the village. Okay, there is a curse now. And yeah, we see this now as Ben and Gwen turn elf like as well. So, Holiday Village seems to have an assimilatory trait to it. Which also implies that the other elves we see were other kids who got assimilated to the village, which. Wow, that's actually pretty creepy and messed up. Man, I can't wait to see how it's actually explained. Actually, on the topic, I really like the elf designs with the beady eyes, antenna-like ears, and the albino hair. It's simple, but simultaneously unique and creepy. Great job. Ben says they need to get Grandpa before they go, but Elsgood says he's in Jingle's workshop, which is extremely dangerous. So, now we're about halfway through the episode, and you'd expect something to finally be explained about all this, like, What's the story of the village, or the curse, or anything? But no, things just get crazier. So out of nowhere it becomes night, as Els gets said they're running out of time. Okay, okay, there's a time limit now, but to what? Total assimilation? The exit's gone? Christmas comes? I don't know. Okay, but now Evil Frosty the Snowman comes out with a magic hat and threatens them. Okay, got Evil Snowman now. Oh man, how are they gonna fight him off? I wonder what alien- oh, they just go inside. Okay then. So we get a bunch of model sheets, I mean pictures of the elves and Mr. Jingles, including an old Polaroid of Elsga when he was a kid. Okay... When was that taken? Why, just a few days ago. What year? 1932, of course. 1932? Okay, what? What the hell is going on here? This place is a temporal anomaly? There's a time warp now all of a sudden? What the hell is going on? Uh, there's a time warp thing involved. I don't know. But they take a random trapdoor to the... Caverns? Under the village? Huh? So Elsgood says they need to destroy the Jingleator. Which, yeah, let's just introduce another random plot device that makes everything magical. Okay, that's kind of an explanation for now. So they had to sneak in using Waldemar as a reindeer, which... You know what? They should have made Christmas variations of Ben's aliens once he became an elf. I guess it would be a lot of extra asset creation, but I mean, game over did it, why can't this one? I tried doing it once, it was a lot of fun. But yeah, this reindeer snitches on them and then immediately they go on a train to escape. And it's a pretty fun sequence, though it just kind of makes you think of Donkey Kong Country. But they get ejected by a freaking creepy jack-in-the-box as they fall through the factory floor. Mr. Jingle soon captures them and forces them to work on the assembly. Are aware of our motto in Holiday Village? Man, not even Santa's magical workshop is free from unreasonable working pressure. But we get a good look at the jingle in it, which I actually really love with how it's colored and structured. It's like a giant festive heart that looks like a living organism. It weirdly gives me a lot of Kids Next Door vibes. Hell, this is pretty much a Kids Next Door episode! Alright everyone, Mr. Jingles has turned his amusement park into a hive mind of holiday horror. We need to break our way in through the defenses, Rescue the kidnapped kids turned to elves by the adults, and shut down the jingle litter before it turns every kid in the world into its festive slaves. Kids next door, battle stations! Hey, if they can cross over Billy and Mandy, why couldn't they cross over here? But yeah, I gotta say another genuine positive. I love this episode's aesthetic. The classic series has such fantastic atmosphere, and it oftentimes leads to more creepy and unnerving sci-fi environments, arguably better than Alien Force, which prides itself on edginess. Well, granted it could be because I can actually freaking SEE these backgrounds. But that drive for a unique, unsettling atmosphere works so great for this episode, bringing a creepy Christmas vibe that I don't really see. I mean, I guess Terraria kinda did, or like Krampus, but that was just straight up horror. Again, I love how the elves had that uncanny alien touch of them. I love how so many aspects of Christmas are turned villainous like the Nutcrackers, and even giant demented toys like Jack in the Box or these weird blobby teddy bears. And the caverns are so weird, but so unsettling with its green tint and massive piles of presents. And the jingle itself like a living Christmas organ, as I said. 
like a living heart that spews out color and glows and looks like bangs along the place. Like it's literally the heart of the village. I love it. I love how they handle this episode aesthetic wise. It's so unique and I want nothing else from Ben 10 doing a Christmas special. Though yeah, the plot is still a mess even compared to other similar episodes of Classic. Like the structure is very similar to Camp Fear, an episode where the trio finds themselves in a campground that's overrun by monstrous fungus they need to take out. And while it doesn't give too much, they still explain and imply enough. They imply it was some alien fungus that arrived on Earth and incubated an underground biosphere until the campsite dug into it during construction, causing the fungus to reawaken and wreak havoc on the camp. And because it's a massive hive mind, need to destroy the mycelium since it's the only way to truly kill a mushroom. It doesn't explain everything, but it's enough that you get it. This episode doesn't at all. We get the creep pocket dimension like world of Holiday Village, a time distortion, a simulation factor through some sort of unexplained curse, the jingle that has basically no origin, and even jingles himself is unexplained. It's impossible to follow and reason with and it just gets worse. So Jingles constantly says he needs everything to be perfect for Christmas, acting like a micromanaging boss. That's the Jingle later. Time is running out. Why? Why is time running out? You haven't explained anything. What is happening? What are the stakes? What is literally anything? Okay, either way, Ben goes gray matter again, which is really weird to see an alien use twice in one episode as he outruns the teddy bear guards into the Jingle later. And yeah, this thing is even weirder inside with ambiguous Christmas machinery dimension stuff. But Ben has to shut down the core and then... Hey, I don't even need to add the music. The show pretty much does it by itself. So Ben as Grey Matter figures out how he can deactivate it, which his words imply this isn't magical but somehow scientific? Okay, that's even weirder. But the jingler blows up and Ben escapes somehow as everything's deactivated and Max is freed. Yay, everything's solved! Oh wait, no, it's still going. Okay, the curse and the jingulator are just completely separate now? Destroy the machine? Why are we still elves? Still a curse! Because now nobody will ever be able to experience the joy of Christmas! So that slight explanation is out the window, and there's literally no explanation to do either one of these things. But okay, Jingles panics now that no one can experience the joys of Christmas, and pleads for them to make new, perfect toys, until Max finally tries to get to him, and says that Christmas isn't about the perfect gift, it's about the spirit of which you give it. Which sounds really emotional, like a payoff, but it really wasn't. Like, I feel maybe that whole family talk in the beginning would have really led itself well here to pay this off, but yeah, it just feels out of nowhere here and should have been reinforced more. This gets to Jingles unreasonably well, as he says even if he wants to deliver the toys, they can't about the Jingle the reindeer can't fly. But Ben does so as Stinkfly, which barely makes any sense as not only has he struggled carrying heavier objects, and there's no way he can fly all around the world with a freaking 10 minute time limit. But I guess they have to do Christmas to raise the completely unexplained curse, which has never actually been clarified or addressed. You'll just have to accept it two minutes before the episode ends. Apparently the sleigh too has warping technology, which why the hell not at this point? As they fly out of the village, even though like the whole thing was that it was spatially and temporally distorted from everything. Oh my god, I give up. I can't explain this. Give it to the madness. Elves are dancing in my head. I'll hail the jingle later. They give the toys to everyone on Earth somehow in like 10 minutes or something, I don't care anymore. They make it back by midnight, which I guess is the time limit, I don't know at this point, as the completely unexplained curse is lifted, and Holiday Village goes back to normal, I guess, and everyone's okay. So I guess Holiday Village was a real place before it got magic or something, I have no idea. Why the hell are you operating a Christmas theme park in summer in goddamn Death Valley? Okay, but then we see adult Elsgood, and Elsgood is implied to know who they are. Why is there a random Naruto reference? I haven't even seen Naruto. But we see what happened to Mr. Jingles, now shown to have found at Holiday Village and was inspired by Max's words in events that were literally just reversed. But the music means a feeling like we should feel good. Man, that honorable Jingles. How he went insane and kidnapped and enslaved children to force them into labor and has literally no backstory or explanation. What a guy. 
but the Tennyson's drive away before things can get any stupider. We'll have to have spent at least one Christmas together as they sing a Christmas song and drive away, along with any possible explanation to whatever the hell we just watched. What fun it is to ride in an unair-conditioned sleigh. So, a few questions. Like, who made Holiday Village and why? Why was it in the middle of nowhere? How did the Holiday Village get a curse in the first place? How is it contained in a pocket dimension? Why is the door the only thing there and no one noticed for almost 100 years? How does this have reality warping abilities? Who is Mr. Jingles and how did this all happen to him? Who were the other kids and why were they there, including Ellsgood? Literally the time warp, why is it even here? What the actual hell is the Jingleator? Where did it come from? Is it magic or alien? If Mr. Jingles was human before he got cursed, how the hell could he make a giant reality warping device all by himself? How can it do literally anything and why? How is it correlated to the curse? What the hell is the curse in the first place? How does it work? Where does it come from? Why does doing Christmas break it? What are the stakes here? And why is there a time limit at midnight? How are they able to do Christmas in the first place in one night with the Omnitrix cooldown and just gen how the plan's rotation works? How can they leave like it's a pocket dimension? How does no one question this? How exactly does time work here once a curse break? How does those good remember? And why the hell is there a random Naruto reference? I'm still not over that! Yeah, absolutely nothing is explained and it makes it incredibly hard to follow and watch and feels like the episode is constantly adding new plot points and not justifying it. Like, how the hell is this all happening? Alien Christmas magic? Did Kringle the Summoner do this? No, he's not even canon, so what gives? Now for fun, I did try and make an explanation for everything in my OC rewrite, and yeah, I have an OC rewrite, but everyone in the fanbase does it. It's like making a fake amount of reason, it's fun as hell. But yeah, I try to take everything and make it somewhat reasonable. Okay, so Thomas J. Ingalls wanted to create a holiday theme park for his family and others to make a perfect Christmas experience. But a powerful alien device capable of generating a pocket dimension fell to Earth. Maybe from Kringle the Summoner, I don't know. And landed in the theme park, creating the massive crater. This is the Jingleator, as it mentally linked to Thomas, where he understood its capabilities to create anything in its pocket dimension, as he's overjoyed he can use to make his dreams come true. He wanted nothing more than make a perfect Christmas for his family and guests, and use make a fantastical Christmas experience. However, his ambitions grew too much, as the machine's damage caused it to malfunction, and simultaneously deteriorated Thomas's mind. It corrupted the landscape and created an assimilation effect that turned everything into Thomas's deteriorating vision of a perfect Christmas, turning the guests into elves themselves, now working for that perfect Christmas. It got so bad that the spatial distortion of the pocket dimension has separated from time and space, creating a temporal bubble from the outside world. And so, it would stay that way for decades, but only a few days inside the pocket dimension, with Thomas, now named Mr. Jingles, and the enslaved kids tirelessly working for a Christmas that will never come. This is the curse of Holiday Village. It is the Jingleator's protocol to make everything a perfect Christmas. But no Christmas can be good enough. Though I am changing it that the Omnitrix's feedback itself triggered the doorway to emerge in their time, since it makes a ton more sense. And if the Jingleator was destroyed, the protocol is still activated, and it will not stop unless it achieves its goal. However, not until Mr. Jingles finally relearns the true meaning of Christmas that he understands now what a true perfect Christmas is. And finally fulfilling it completes the protocol and frees the village. Now with the Jingleator deactivated, reverses the anomalous effects as if it never activated at all until the day it was deactivated. I don't know, that's what I would do. It is possible that maybe the Papa Trier for the episode might explain it, but they're unfortunately lost so we get no answers. PSA, their lost media. Please, if you have any recordings of Benton Classic, try and see if it's a pub of trivia. It's really important. Please help out. Now, is this episode bad? So yeah, as much as this episode has a few good things, the complete mess of a plot and story makes it so hard to follow, understand, and can make it an actively frustrating experience. It is such an incoherent mess that it's understandable why it's treated as one of the worst Ben 10 episodes. But... Is it entertaining? Hell yes! I'm sorry, but in a way, I think it makes me love this episode. It is such a mess. It is so insane. It's a complete drug trip. But it's so much fun. Every inane decision, every convoluted plot point, every unexplained situation, every bonker scene is just so bad it's good. 
I am never bored watching this episode. At least it went all out in its insanity and made it insanely memorable as well. It is a Christmas acid trip and I love it. Plus, I legitimately love the aesthetics as I said, and it has the perfect unsettling sci-fi atmosphere that I absolutely love from this series. Where how this is the only Christmas special the show had in its 280 episode run, and it's the one that justified it the least in story. It's an episode I would legit just put on to have some festive fun which is how bonkers it is. It's definitely one of the most unique episodes of Ben 10, and honestly one of the most unique episodes of the series, and even one of the most unique Christmas specials I've seen. If you're a Ben 10 fan, give it a watch, especially for the holiday season, and enjoy the insanity. And if you're not, check it out for just how insane it is. Give it a watch, and fall into the festive madness. Before you become part of it. That, that doesn't make sense, it's the middle of July! Ho ho ho, I'm on a summer run!